All right, now we're going to continue on that line of thinking that I started last week or maybe a couple of weeks ago about how I'm a small part of what goes on out here. I've created a structure whereby the environment makes these dogs want to work, okay? Now, so they come out here, they want to work because they like hanging out with me. Look at this dog, comes up, says, hey, Stoney, what are you doing? I say, nothing. Appreciate you coming over here and seeing me. Look at these guys here, though. When uh, you first started watching these series of videos, when he was new, Harley wasn't here, Sadie wasn't here, and Fletch wasn't here, okay? And I had a little dog named Tilly. And so I used Tilly, I'd walk Tilly around, and Wendy really liked Tilly, so she would kind of follow Tilly around. And, uh, you know, she saw Tilly having fun with me. She saw Tilly having fun on the Exercise with Small Challenges course. And she said, hey, Stoney, can I learn to do that? I said, sure. Well, then Harley came, and Sadie came. And they saw me doing it with Winnie, because Tilly went home. And Harley, and I kind of got in trouble for this because last video, Harley, she was just hanging around with a stick. She would just run into the frame every so often with a stick trying to get everybody to quit working and go play. But what Harley had not internalized yet is here we put the work before the play. And that's all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm putting the work before the play and I'm making these dogs realize that if they'll work, that they'll get to play. And the reason they all want to work is because they're all competing for my attention and my approval, which in the beginning stages is represented by these rewards that you see me give them. Okay? A lot of times people don't understand why the dogs here seem to be so interested in the rewards. It's because it's not about the food, guys. It's not about the food. It's about, I'm picking a dog out. Watch, I'm going to pick Winnie out and say, you're special right now. What you're doing right now, I really appreciate it. And when I give attention to Winnie, these other three, they're saying, well, what about us? Aren't we special? Fletch is being good, so now he's special. And Harley's being good. And uh, Sadie's being good. Okay, so now, they're all sitting here on this table voluntarily. I didn't ask these dogs to get up here. They're just voluntarily sitting there. We call that on autonomous uh, behavior selection. Right now, I'm going to actually ask them to do something with me. And if I've structured this activity right, when I ask one of them to do something with me, the others are going to want to do something with me too. So we'll start off with Winnie because she's kind of the best at it. And I want her to serve as the, as the, as the mentor today. Come on. And so I'm just going to walk her on my little course and work on my vocabulary. Hup. Very nice. Hup. Good dog. Easy. Remember, when I'm saying easy, I want the dog just to be aware of what's going on in the environment. It's kind of what I tell them when I don't want them to, you know, knock stuff over. Foot placement drill. I really like for dogs to have good, good body awareness, what we call proprioception. Now look, these dogs are following me around and they're saying, hey, Stoney, is it my turn yet? I'm like, it's not your turn yet. You're not at work, but I do appreciate you coming and offering to pick up a shift. Come on, come on, hop. Very nice. You are a very nice dog. Good dog. Wait. Oh, good dog. Very nice. Now these guys are following me around and they're saying, hey, Stoney, how's, uh, how, how's, how's that going over there? Is it my turn? Is it coming up on my turn? I'm like, not yet, guys, but just wait. Easy. Hup. Very nice. Now see how everybody's kind of following along. Wanting to see what they can do. Wait. Very nice. Easy. Good dog. Very nice. Wait. Good. Now look at Harley. Last week, all Harley would do is uh, get a stick and run around trying to get everybody else to get off work. She was like, hey, why are you guys following Stoney around? He's boring. Going out in the yard, that's what's fun. Let's go out in the yard and play. And it takes them a little while to understand that the yard time, that the play time is dependent upon making Stoney happy. You make Stoney happy and good things happen. And if you can just raise a dog to look at the world and understand that simple principle, if I make human beings happy, human beings will do awesome stuff for me. Well, then you're going to have a pretty well-behaved dog. All right, so Harley's got up here, and she says, Hey, Stoney, can, I, can it be my turn? Watch out there, Winnie. Well, come on, Harley. Sure, it can be your turn. Come on, come on. All right. Little jump, little hop. Oh, it's a good dog, little hop. Very nice. Oh, very good. Now, it's hard to believe that just a week ago, you know, Harley, she wouldn't even walk on the leash. You know, she wouldn't come to you. And all she did was run around with a stick in her mouth. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, you'll notice I'm not even having to use a whole lot of treats with Harley now. Everybody always asks me the same thing. Stoney, hey, how, you know, how long do you have to use the treats? And my answer is always the same, basically. You, you know, you use them until you don't have to use them anymore. 
It's just exactly like training wheels on a bicycle. You put them on, you use them, and one day you find that you don't need them anymore. Just good dogs. Oh, but man, treats sure are handy in the beginning. I mean, you're literally paying the dog with something. Oh, very nice. Come on up. Wait. Good girl. That you have to give them anyway. So imagine <laughs> at the end of the week, you had to give a guy $100. And you could either get your yard mowed or not, right? But you got to give him $100. That's kind of how food is with the puppy. You have to feed them. But you can either get good behavior and feed them, or you can get bad behavior and feed them. Uh, I, you know, why not use the food to get good behavior? It makes everything a lot easier. <laughs> Easy. Oh, very nice. You're very sure-footed now, Harley. Good dog. Now, see, so Harley has come up here, and she is, you know, she understands exactly what's expected. Look at Winnie. Winnie's like, hey, wait a minute. Why can't I be involved in that? And she can. She just can't, oh, be the center of attention all the time. And you'll remember in the last video series, or the one before the last one, Tilly was the one who had gotten the hang of everything, and so she thought she needed to be the center of attention all the time. So not only are we using the dogs to create a certain amount of competition and to serve in a mentoring role, right, but we're also using this work to teach the dogs that they're not always the center of attention. And that's very hard. It's very hard for dogs to understand that. It's very hard for children to understand that, but it's something everyone needs to learn. All right, go on, Sadie dog. Good dog. It's going to be your turn in a minute. So Harley's moving around here, and she's doing just about perfectly. Good dog. Good. Wait. Very nice. Easy. You can do it. Come on. Oh, you're a very smart dog. Oh, very good. Now, see, now Harley is the only one that's actually at work. Okay, these other guys, imagine you're at a place where you can pick up shifts. And uh, if you can pick up a shift, it's nice to have the kind of employees that show up and say, hey, can I get a little bit of extra work in today? And that's what we're after. Now look at Sadie down here. Sadie's come down here. Oh, good dog. And she said, well, Stoney, what if I just come stand on this slide? Would you notice me? And I'm like, well, sure, of course I would notice you. Maybe you can even walk up the slide. That would be awesome. And Sadie's a pretty sure-footed little dog, and she can. Good. So Sadie's been following Winnie around, and she's been following Harley around, and uh, finally it's her turn to work. And if you do things properly, guys, that's how dogs look at it. They don't look at it like, oh, here comes Mr. Dominant. Here comes the big bad wolf that puts all the other wolves in line. No, it just it says, hey, Stoney, is it my turn? Can I get some interaction time with you? Can I come and be still and have good manners so that I know that you'll do nice stuff for me? And my answer is always yes. Of course you can. That's great. Very good dog. And look at Winnie. She's always trying to be the center of attention nowadays. Oh, very nice. Now this dog here, you see this one here? Right here, this dog's name's Jesse, and she is here for uh, uh, remedial training because she is a wild, wild character. She's very friendly and very outgoing, but she lives with very nice people who let her get completely out of sorts. She never worked for anything a day in her life, and so she thinks that everything always is about Jesse. It's Jesse time 100% of the time, all day long. And so she's up here trying to learn how to be calm and quiet. Uh, now she's about a year old or a little over a year old so we had to take it easy with her all right so back to sadie sadie's perfect age i think she's 14 weeks or so good dog and see how you see how jesse she's trying to kind of mess up everything just like harley was doing a week or two ago but that's okay that'll that'll go away pretty soon good dog wait very nice. These guys are following me around, so I say I appreciate it. Now look at this dog. This dog's six or seven years old. Oh, Lily. Hey, Lily, what are you doing? Lily's 10. But I still give them treats. That, you know, these old dogs, guys, they come out here, and of course they know how to mind. But when they're out here in the yard with me, you know, I don't want them to see these puppies getting tons and tons of treats and getting to do tons and tons of activities and them not get to. So when they're out here, I still throw them some treats, still love on them. I still do the course with them. When they get a little bit older, like... Uh, like uh, Lily there, I just don't make her do anything that's very high off the ground or, you know, that's too awfully mentally or physically taxing. Come on, Sadie. Oh, very nice. Because they're not sure-footed when they're 10 like they are when they're four months. Good dog. Easy. Very nice. But look at this dog. She's working, guys, because she likes to work. And she likes to work because I put her in an environment where work is valued. You know, and if you think about kind of what's wrong with the country today, people don't value work. 
You know, everybody looks at a job as a, it gets in the way of having fun. People are too, you know, too interested in having fun, too interested in self-actualization, too interested in their most base instincts, right? And I'm not against play. Listen, I'm a libertarian. I, I believe in every kind of play there is. But I think you always should put the work before the play. Okay, just that simple. So if you don't ever take anything else from my, environment, from my videos, take these two things. One, a tired dog is a good dog. And two, put your work before your play. Because you can, you can do a lot of playing if you get the work done first. This is that dog over there. Fletch, you're playing too much. Fletch! Fletch! Hey! Dude. Now see, Fletch is a prime can Hey, Fletch, come here. See if I can get him over here in the camera. Come here, Fletch! Fletch, come here. Come here. Now, look, you see this guy? His name is Fletch. Now, Fletch is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, about wanting to put his play before he works. Fletch is a real good-looking dog, and uh, everybody he comes in contact with talks about how good-looking he is, and so he's been doted on and spoiled his whole life. And you see, while I'm over here trying to work, and Sadie's over here trying to work, what was he over there doing? He was over there making noise. He's like your neighbor that plays rap music at 1 o'clock in the morning because they don't get up and go to work, you know. But I'm going to get him lined out. There ain't no free rides here at my kennel. Easy. Good dog. Up, up. Very nice, Sadie. You're very smart, Wade. Good dog. Easy. Good. Up. Now look, everybody's just hanging out. Oh, where are you going, Dogo? Come get you a treat. There you go. All right, Sadie. Come on. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Down the slide. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Dogs that love to work. You see how, look at Winnie. She's doing the whole routine, you know, just because she wants my attention. I mean, how awesome is that? You just can't get any better than that right there, guys. All right, so, uh, even Fletch. Look here, even Mr. Self-Important. Oh, Mr. The Whole World is About Me, Fletch, has come over here and decided he was going to get a little work in. So let's see what he can do. Come on, Fletch. Oh, can you do any work at all? Come on, buddy. Very nice. Up. Oh. Now, you know, you always see, guys, I'm talking about the, the dog training goals being subjective. Like, when you get a dog like Fletch, Fletch is about 10 months old. Big old German Shepherd puppy. And uh, German Shepherds, you know, they're not the most physically resilient dogs in the world. They have a lot of hard time with their proprioception and stuff. And so you'll notice, like watch this dog as he's trying to do these obstacles. You know, he has a little bit of trouble as compared to these young lab puppies. And so I have to, when I'm working with a dog like Fletch, not only do I have to make allowances for the fact that he's a little bit older, but I also have to make allowances for how his body works. So I can't expect Fletch to, to be able to perform at as high a level physically as some of these other dogs. And so what I'm going to reward him for is just, you know, gradually making more effort. And that's really what I'm doing out here, guys. Is I have subjective goals where I, I reward based on effort level. And so what's easy for Sadie and Winnie and Harley is hard for Fletch. So, you know, I have to kind of set my goals in accordance with his physical ability. Good boy. Can you do this? You see how he's, like, look at that. See, it's, you know, so I just have to go slow and I have to be careful. There you go. Good boy, Fletch. It's very nice. Now, uh, a lot of times if you have a dog that's, you know, not the most coordinated dog in the world, um, what you do is you take and you use your small exercise with small challenges to I encourage the connection between his toes and his brain. Remember what we call that toes to nose stimulation. And I'll take this dog and over the course of the next few weeks, his whole body will change. His whole body will tighten up. He will become much more dexterous. He will become much more confident. His uh, ability to concentrate under distraction will become much better, you know. But it's just a, you know, it's just a real slow process. Good boy. Good. Let's slow him down. Be really careful. Good. Just wait. Now see like an obstacle like this which presents very little trouble to most puppies that come out here. It's really hard for Fletch. And so I have to go very slowly and I have to be very aware of his particular you know physical characteristics. Wait. Very nice. 
Easy. Now, the good thing about German Shepherds is that they are very pattern cognizant dogs. So, like, once you show them a pattern, they're very good at adhering to that pattern. So, like, the food work that you have to do with a German Shepherd, usually it's maybe a week, two weeks. It's not much at all. And uh, they uh, pick up the pattern, and then, you know, like I told you before, adherence to a pattern is self-reinforcing. Here's an old dog. It's 11 years old. We'll give him a treat just for being cool, being an awesome dude. That's very nice. All right.